as if the fourth, not the fourth wall, but the Uncanny Valley weren't terrifying enough. Good grief. When will people learn, don't trust robots that look too human? Stick with C-3PO and R2-D2. And Johnny Five. So, <clears throat> once again, we have a story of technology run amok in the vein of uh, iRobot and other classic uh, crazy android stories from the director of Annabelle and the Black Phone. Both good films, by the way. <clears throat> um, comes Megan, or M3 Generation Android, or whatever it was. Um, basically, it's about a little girl who loses her parents and gets stuck with her aunt, who works at a robotics company, and who is trying to develop the latest Furby, basically. And <clears throat> her side project is a android doll who can uh, basically be a babysitter and a best friend. Unfortunately, she forgot to program the robot with the notion that human life is precious above all else. And use your imagination from here because I'm not going to spoil it. Okay, first off, the little girl. <clears throat> um, she barely survives the incident that claims her parents. And she visibly goes through various stages of grief. And when uh, the robot is given to her and then taken away for various reasons... She reacts like a junkie, and honestly, I found that to be a very legit performance. The little girl playing the, car, playing the part is very believable. At first, she's like a zombie because she's stuck in the... It hasn't happened yet. I can't believe it has happened. Or I can't believe it happened. This can't be happening kind of vibe. And then she's happy for a little while. Then things go south, and suddenly all she wants is the doll. And she reacts like a junkie not getting their fix. And someone going through grief. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely a legit reaction. I'm praising her performance. I hope she goes on to do many great things, even if it doesn't involve acting. The... Uh, Lady Roboticist is a workaholic. She's uh, not used to being around kids, even though she develops toys. Irony. Um, she doesn't really know how to handle a small human. So she tries to basically turn the robot into a surrogate. But... That's never a good idea. Basically, both the girl and the woman go through a character development as they reach their potential. As for the villain of the story, oh good grief. This thing is like uh, Chucky times Annabelle to the to the demonic toys nth degree. I mean, her voice is soft, but that same soft voice when it starts saying harsh things is extremely disturbing. The face is way too flawless to the point where the lifelessness coupled with the movement and activity and the voice just Makes for something you want to exercise. You want you want her to share a cabinet with Annabelle, the real Annabelle. And the uh, stunt actress's movements are both uh, are both um, convincing 
and disturbing because she goes from fluid movements to almost zombie-like or animal-like movements like that. And basically, uh, she's the obvious reason why you don't want to uh, make a robot, especially one that looks human. Although, there is one robot that ends up being sort of a hero, but I'm not going to spoil it. The background characters, um, they were good. They added flavor to this fairly drab world. And I think two of the actors uh, worked on Power Rangers Dino Fury. I'm going to have to look that up later. Um, overall, the cast was brilliant. The effects were brilliant. The stunt work and voice work for Megan was brilliant, and this film takes the classic uh, machines gone amuck due to human short-sightedness story uh, to new levels. It, it shows us that grief can't be uh, just dealt with uh, using technology. You have to have the human factor. And robots also need the human factor, like Bicentennial Man. Otherwise, they become like HAL 9000 and the Terminator. Not a good combo. So, yeah, if you're into uh, stories like this, or you might be processing some grief over loss, um, this movie was pretty good. Very cathartic. This is Mr. J signing out and reminding you, always keep a lightsaber handy when dealing with new types of robots, especially when they look human. There's a reason the Uncanny Valley exists. Robophobia is not really a phobia if the robots are really out to get you.